Once again, we're not looking at the top 10 Hot Magic cards this week. We're looking at the top 15. Tons of stuff going on in the secondary market. Stay tuned to find out what cards are hot right now. This video is sponsored by Flipside Gaming. Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Right now, you can pre-order Outlaws of Thunder Junction or find a vast number of great products on their website. Remember, shipping is free in the U.S. if your order is over $100 or consists only of singles. Plus, you no longer need any promo codes on their website. The savings is built right into the prices that you see on the site. Same great prices, same great products, and same great service without the extra step. Find their link in the description below. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where today we're going to count down the top 15 hottest Magic cards of the week. Fallout Commander deck still driving a lot of prices. But also, Outlaws of Thunder Junction previews are in full swing, and they're having an impact on a number of cards that you're going to see in the video today. Quickly before we get into it, just a few things. I do want to say thank you to one of the viewers who gave a super thanks tip for last Tuesday's video, and that is Todd Branch. Todd, thank you again for all your support for the channel. It does mean so much, and it really helps a lot. Thank you for the generous super thanks tips. Thank you for being a gold patron. I truly appreciate all the support. And also, I do want to say thank you to one of our channel members, and that is Joseph Capitani. Joseph is one of our Hero and Legend tier YouTube channel members. And again, Joseph, thank you for your support. Thank you for everything you do for the channel. Joseph also has given a lot of generous super thanks tips as well. So thank you, Joseph. And one other thing. Remember, this video is sponsored by FlipSideGaming.com. Check out their website. They have a ton of MTG products on there. Great variety. You can also pre-order Outlaws of Thunder Junction right now on the website. And remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States, and you can find a direct link to their website down below. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's begin with our number 15 card today, Ebony Fly. This goes up $1.91 to $3.91. That's a 96% increase. This is found in both the Planar Portal and Aura of Courage Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Commander decks. Up until a couple weeks ago, though, this card was only seeing just a little commander play. Sometimes it would be in Kozilek like the Great Distortion, for example, but recently many cards that allow you to roll a die have taken off. And if you've been watching these videos, you know why. One very popular new commander came out of the Fallout Hail Caesar deck, and many players are picking up die roll cards like this one to add to those builds. The card I'm talking about is Mr. House, President and CEO. More on him later. Number 14 is Herald of Secret Streams. The Ixalan copy goes up $1.35 to $5.35. That is a 34% increase. The Lost Caverns of Ixalan Commander copy goes up $2.50 to $5.50. That is an 83% increase, and that is from the Explorers of the Deep Commander deck. Prior to a couple weeks ago, this was a fairly popular Commander card in several decks. One of the most played ones was Hackball of the Surging Soul, which makes sense since it is from the same pre-con, but Fallout is now pushing this card too. Many players wanted to upgrade the Mutant Menace Fallout deck, while others want to put it in fresh builds around the front-facing commander from there, the Wise Mothman. Number 13 is Valky, God of Lies from Keldheim. It goes up 326 to 832. That's a 64% increase. Here we have a card that's seen play in Pioneer, both in Nib to Light and 5-color mid-range decks. They typically run a copy of this in the main. It also has gotten some commander play, both as a commander and part of the 99 of several builds. But the reason this is moving now has to do with Outlaws of Thunder Junction previews. So there is a new mechanic called Plot. It will let you pay a cost to exile a card from your hand, and then it will let you play the card at sorcery speed on a future turn without paying its mana cost. The idea here is if you could get Valky plotted, then when you play the card, you could actually play it flipped. So how would you go about doing that? Well, let me introduce you to Jace Reawakened. As it stands now, you could use the second plus one on Valky, and then on a future turn, play the back side of the card. Here's another Outlaws at Thunder Junction preview card that would help you do the same thing. Kellen joins up. Now bear in mind, we have not seen the official ruling on this type of interaction yet. Not too long ago, they changed the way Cascade worked to prevent these type of shenanigans from happening, so we will have to see where this lands. Regardless though, some players and speculators are picking up Valky now in case it does see some kind of competitive play with the new Jace once Thunder Junction is released. Number 12 is Flaring Pain. It goes up 329 to 629. That's a 110% increase. This Judgment copy is the only tournament legal copy of the card currently. This is hot now due to the amount of play it's seeing in the Pauper format. 
It's found in a number of decks there, including a couple big ones, Burn and Boggles. In both those decks, there are two copies of this in the sideboard typically. Ultimately, this is a hard to find card in demand and that's why it's spiking. Although the demand may be split between players and speculators. Number 11 is Brina the Demagogue. This is the foil copy from the Commander 2021 Silver Quill Statement deck. It's going up 342 this week to 1241, that's a 38% increase. The card continues to be a popular commander and it's in the 99 of some builds like Ishin 2 Heavens is one for example. So why is this hot now though? Again, the reason is found in the Outlaws of Thunder Junction previews. We have seen a number of cards that interact with Outlaws. So which creature types are considered Outlaws? Assassins, Mercenaries, Pirates, Rogues, and wait for it, Warlocks. And this happens to be a Bird Warlock. Some players want this to upgrade the most wanted commander deck, or they want to put it in fresh builds around the front facing commander from there, Olivia Opulent Outlaw. Keep in mind though, Olivia is the only card we've seen so far from this deck. But it does have speculators and players already picking up Brina. You never know though, Brina could get reprinted in the product. Number 10 is Cybermen Squadron. This goes up 464 this week to 1463. That is a 46% increase. This is from the Doctor Who Commander deck, Masters of Evil. It was actually number 9 on our hot list last week. Since it came out, it has seen a fair amount of Commander play in a bunch of builds. One of the more popular ones is Urza Chief Artificer, but now Fallout is creating more demand for this card. It is another card players are picking up to put in commander builds around Mr. House, President and CEO from the Hal Caesar deck. Cyberman Squadron is showing up in a lot of those builds now. Number 9 is Kataran Summons. This goes up 482 to 549. That's a 719% increase. So here we have an older card yet to be reprinted and currently it really doesn't see much play to speak of. However, as I mentioned a moment ago, mercenaries are considered outlaws and outlaws of Thunder Junction. Because of that, speculators and some players are jumping on this, resulting in a pretty hard spike. Again, it might be a good upgrade to the most wanted deck, or it might be reprinted in that deck for all we know. If not, though, it could also be a good pickup for fresh builds around Olivia Opulent Outlaw as well. Plus, we have already seen a number of mercenaries previewed that are in the main set, including these legendary creatures. Rakdos the Muscle, Ty Joaquin Perfect Shot, and Vile Smasher Gleeful Grenadier. I play the stereo loud when I'm away from the number 8 card this week, Maddening Hex. This is from the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Draconic Rage Commander deck, and you might remember that joke and this card from last week's video where it was also number 8. This week though, it goes up for 85 to $20.84 for a 30% increase. Now it used to see some legacy play, but I don't see it there as much anymore. It was getting a little commander play in a few different builds, one example was Lind Cheerful Tormentor. But wait a minute, does Maddening Hex lead to you rolling a die? Yup, another card spiking as players look for copies to put in their Mr. House, President and CEO Commander decks. Number 7 is Cyberman Patrol. This goes up 487 to 862, that's a 130% increase. This is also from the Doctor Who Masters of Evil Commander deck. Since it's been out, it has been showing up in a few different Commander builds, the most popular being the front facing Commander from its pre-con, Davros Dalek Creator. But Fallout has pushed this card too. Some wanted to put it in builds around a card from the Science Commander deck with an exclamation point, and that card is Liberty Prime Recharge. But another reason that Cyberman Patrol is spiking is due to another larger group of Commander players. It is another card players are picking up to put in Commander builds around Mr. House, President and CEO. Number 6 is Tombstone Stairwell. This goes up 618 this week to 1738, that's a 55% increase. Here we have a reserve list card that doesn't see all that much play to speak of, but a preview from Outlaws of Thunder Junction is pushing this. Some commander players may want this for builds around this card here. Campbell Profiteering Mayor. Aside from true player interest, remember Tombstone Stairwell is a reserve list card so many speculators have been picking it up since Campbell was revealed. Additionally, Tombstone Stairwell was discussed on the latest episode of MTG Goldfish Commander Clash, which may have brought some more attention to it this week as well. Number 5 is Nyssa Resurgent Animus. This goes up 662 this week to 2922 for a 29% increase. This is a highly played standard card in a number of decks, Teamer Control, Saltai Graveyard, 4 Color Control, and 4 Color Graveyard. They all tend to run 4 copies in the main typically. It gets some commander play too, sometimes as a commander usually though in the 99 of a number of different builds, 
the most popular being Karametra God of Harvest, but some players were picking this up recently to add to their Voja Jaws of the Conclave builds. That was a very popular new commander, which was a Murders at Carlisle Manor pre-release card. However, Nissa is another card being pushed by Outlaws of Thunder Junction previews as well. Through the previews, we are seeing a land matter strategy come together in the set, and some are specking on Nissa because of that. There are players that are already thinking of adding this to Commander decks around a couple of the previewed cards. One of which is the Gitrog, Ravenous Ride. The other one is Bristly Bill Spine Sower. And aside from that, here's a few more examples of card previews that would play well with Nissa. Colossal Rattleworm, Free Strider Lookout, and Map the Frontier. Number four is Eater of the Dead, another older card yet to be reprinted. This goes up 668 this week to 1994. That's a 50% increase. So this currently sees a little commander play in a few decks. The most popular one is Phoenix God of Deception, but speculators are jumping on this because you guessed it, Outlaws previews. So there's a new mechanic called Crime. You commit a crime whenever you cast a spell or activate an ability that targets an opponent or their stuff, meaning spells, permanents, hand, library, or graveyard. This creature gives you a free way to target cards in your opponent's graveyards and commit crimes. This will most certainly see more commander play. In fact, here are some legendary creatures that have been previewed that may want Eater of the Dead in their builds. The first is Marchesa, Dealer of Death. We also have Karavek, the Punisher, and Vadmir, New Blood. Marchesa, though, seems like the strongest of the three pictured there. Number three is Alenda's Hierophant. This goes up 1122 to 1499. That's a 298% increase. It is from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan Blood Rites Commander deck, and it has seen a lot of commander play since it came out in lots of different decks. The most popular is around the front facing commander from its pre-con, Clavelenio, First of the Blessed, but now speculators and players are going after this as a possible upgrade to the upcoming Outlaws of Thunder Junction commander deck most wanted, or it's another card you might want to put in a fresh build around that front facing commander, Olivia Opulent Outlaw. Again though, we don't know if Alenda's Hierophant is going to be reprinted in that deck, so it is a bit of a risky spec, but at least it's truly a solid card. No, you didn't go back in time. Our number two card is Soren Imperious Bloodlord from Corset 2020. It goes up 1596 this week to 6346. That is a 34% increase. Now you might remember, this card got super hot several weeks ago due to Pro Tour Murders at Carlisle Manor and the Rakdos Vampires Pioneer deck, which was enhanced at the time by Vein Ripper, a new card from that set. It had an incredible Pro Tour weekend, and the build ran four copies of Soren Imperious Bloodlord. In the end, Sam Party came in fifth using the deck, and Seth Manfield came in first. Fast forward to today, where Rakdos Vampires is still seeing a ton of play and doing very well in the format. There's even been some spin-off decks running Soren, and the card sees modern play too in Orzhov midrange. Not to mention it's even had a little bit of presence in Commander, usually in Edgar Markov. So this card has already had a lot of demand on it, but Outlaws is adding to that demand. Some players want this to upgrade the most wanted Commander deck again, while others want to put it in fresh builds around Olivia Opulent Outlaw. Soren is an expensive spec, and again we don't know what other cards are going to be in that most wanted deck yet. All right, coming in at number one is a card from Ravnica Clue Edition, Carnage Interpreter. It goes up 2296 to 2495. That is a 1,144% increase if you're doing the math at home. And you know what? I'm actually not surprised by this. Ravnica Clue Edition was not a very popular product, and we see this all the time. If a product does not sell well, the good cards from that product tend to spike. Remember, though, this is not one of the guaranteed cards in a bundle. This comes in the random jumpstart style packs that come in the bundles, and most bundles will have duplicates of some packs while missing others. If you're missing the pack that has Carnage Interpreter, well, then you're not going to get this card in your bundle. So that explains the supply, but what's caused the demand? Well, this was added to the most recent incarnation of the MTGO Vintage Cube, which really showcased how good the card is. In fact, Louis Scott Vargas talked about how strong the card is on his Vintage Cube streams. I have seen some players trying it out in Legacy decks too, like Reanimator or Painter, and it's also showing up in some CEDH Flame War Brash Veteran decks too. Long story short, too late. So in the end, who done it? The principles of supply and demand strike again. Alright, that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, but join us later in the week because we're going to be looking at the other side of this coin, the 10 coldest cards that are out there. 
Maybe you can find some deals on cards that are dropping in price. Until next time though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.